Hello, my name is Dr Adam Smith and I have a very strong affinity with the ocean and its creatures. I'm a marine biologist, freediver, spearfisher and also national chair of the Australian Underwater Federation, which is the peak body representing the interests of freedivers and spearfishers. I strongly encourage all people with an interest in the water to join the Australian Underwater Federation. Contact details can be found at the end of this program. I'm delighted to introduce this magnificent program by Brett Verko. I've dived with Brett on several occasions and he is extremely knowledgeable of fish and spearfishing and his video camera takes you with him on some amazing breath hold dives. This is the first program in the new Immersion series which features spearfishing action from locations all over Australia. This particular program was filmed on the north coast of New South Wales in the beautiful waters between Tweed Heads and Smoky Cape and there's quite a lot of excellent footage from Brett's home waters around Coffs Harbour. Spearfishing is a fantastic sport and many people do not have a great understanding of how we do it. This program educates by providing the names of common and prized species, both pelagic and demersal. It tells you where to find them, how to catch them, but also has strong messages about conservation, sustainability and selectivity. There are two world record catches on this program, as well as numerous large fish action on great species such as mulloway, yellowtail kingfish, wahoo and dolphinfish. Please remember that this footage has been compiled over several years and hundreds of hours immersed in the water. And if you're a beginner, then you will not get these types of results straight away. But you will learn and you will improve. Sharks used to be regarded with terror by people who entered the ocean. Now we regard species such as grey nurse sharks as a magnificent part of the biodiversity. We only look and don't interfere. This program also contains footage of whales, dolphins, turtles, rays, jellyfish and other invertebrates and huge schools of fish which reinforces the colour, beauty and joy of being underwater. So whether you are an expert or a novice, I welcome you to join Brett Verko and his friends in the underwater world of the freediver and spearfisher as they hunt an interesting mix of pelagic and demersal species. There are only two places on the Australian continent where southern flowing warm tropical currents meet and mix with cooler, nutrient rich temperate waters. On the west coast this happens near Shark Bay and on the eastern seaboard this occurs off the north coast of New South Wales. The East Australia Current brings warm tropical waters from the Coral Sea down the east coast into New South Wales, where they eventually mingle with cool temperate waters. The resulting mix provides a unique environment where corals and tropical reef fish coexist with temperate seaweeds and fish species from colder latitudes. Numerous estuaries provide nursery areas for many juvenile marine species. Add to this a large number of offshore reefs, a narrow continental shelf, and some of New South Wales' most important island groups, such as the Solitary Islands, and you have some world-class spearfishing opportunities. The New South Wales North Coast supports many industries that benefit directly from the great marine biodiversity of this region. In this film, you'll see some of the wide variety of species encountered whilst diving at some of the best spearfishing locations on the New South Wales North Coast.
The Australian Jewfish or Mulloway is a large predator found on rocky shores, beaches, offshore rocky reefs and in estuaries. There are similar species to the American white sea bass and the South African Daga salmon or cob. Mulloway may reach 45 kilograms in weight and are one of New South Wales' premier fish species due to their combination of good eating qualities, size and handsome appearance. In deeper water you can find schools of a hundred or so individuals, but in the inshore caves and whitewater gullies it's rare to find more than 30 or so fish in a school. Mulloway migrate along the coast and shelter in the same locations each year. Inshore fish are often found in the same vicinity as Taylor and Brim schools, while fish found in deep water are usually near shoals of bait. In northern New South Wales, Mulloway are most often hunted during the winter and early spring, when conditions are settled and the inshore water is a little clearer. Further south around Sydney, the fish are more plentiful in the summer. Due to the reduced visibility and excessive turbulence found around inshore Mulloway holes, it's a good idea to use a short, powerful gun and a 5 to 8 metre rig line with a small pull under float. Care must be taken to ensure that divers stay clear of ropes, lines and spear points.
massive Molloway like this IUSA world record 38.4 kilogram specimen taken by Gavin Smithers can put up a tough fight and will often bend spears. Most inshore Mulloway holes are only safely accessible on a high tide with low swell. Big fish are regularly taken in very shallow water. The grey nurse is a distinctive shark often encountered by spearfishers in New South Wales. They're readily identified by their two similar sized dorsal fins, a grey brown back with darker blotches and an overcrowded mouth full of backward facing dagger like teeth. During daylight hours they're usually sluggish and not considered dangerous, but as with all sharks they should never be provoked. Grey nurse sharks are much more active at dusk, dawn or around the full moon when they're in hunting mode. They live in shallow coastal waters from the surf zone down to as deep as 190 metres. During the day, grey nurse sharks are generally found schooling in the vicinity of steep drop-offs, caves and ledges. In the 1970s, grey nurse shark populations were in decline as a result of persecution, overfishing, hook injuries and deaths in shark nets. In 1984, the New South Wales government listed them as a protected species, the first shark to be protected anywhere in the world. Grey nurse sharks are very tolerant of freedivers and coexist comfortably with them. The eastern rock lobster is the largest and some say the best eating spiny lobster in the world. They're highly sought after by both recreational and commercial fishers. The eastern rock lobster lives for up to 20 years and can grow to over 15 kilograms. They're usually found near inshore rocky ledges and caves during winter and spring. As a result of improved management, 
The eastern rock lobster is bouncing back from the effects of earlier overexploitation. The eastern blue groper is a species well known to freedivers in New South Wales. They're found in coastal marine waters from southern Queensland to Wilson's Promontory in Victoria. Eastern blue groper grow to 1.2 metres in length and can exceed 20 kilograms in weight. Spearfishing for blue groper has been banned in New South Wales since 1969 and most divers are happy to see good numbers of these inquisitive fish while targeting more sporting species. Tarwine are a coastal marine fish and occur on offshore reefs to depths of about 35 metres, where they reach a size of up to 3 kilograms and a length of over 40 centimetres. Red moong are confined to the east coast of Australia, from southern Queensland to Bass Strait. They're common in New South Wales waters, occurring to a depth of about 50 metres. Snapper are one of the most popular Australian food fish. They grow to 1.3 metres in length and can weigh at least 20 kilograms. The older fish develop a prominent hump on the top of the head. The hump develops in both sexes but is more prominent in males. Snapper occur in good numbers off the New South Wales north coast, but are rarely seen by spearfishers. Juveniles are found in bays and inlets, while adults live on offshore reefs. At certain times of the year they can be found in quite shallow water. Snapper make a very difficult target for spearfishers due to their wary nature. The sandbar shark grows to about 2.4 metres and has a very large dorsal fin making it easy to identify.
they have triangular serrated upper teeth and are not normally considered dangerous. However, they will become aggressive when food is around. While filming this sandbar, a second larger shark rammed the cameraman. In the summer months, sandbar sharks can be found throughout the New South Wales north coast. Sawtail surgeon are found from northern New South Wales to north Queensland year round and reach a size of about 70 centimetres. Mangrove jack, snapper and blue barred parrot can sometimes be found schooling with sawtail surgeon and it's always worth checking to see if there is a quality fish amongst them. Humpback whales can reach up to 15 metres in length and achieve a body weight of 40 tonnes. They're easily identified by their huge pectoral flippers which are nearly one third the length of their body. These days they're a common sight off the New South Wales coast from July to late October each year as they complete the 2,500 kilometre annual migration between Antarctica and Australia. Humpback whales are recovering from severe depletion due to commercial whaling and are now at about one eighth of their former population. Each year their numbers increase by about 10% so we can expect many future encounters. The common dolphin is one of the smallest of the dolphin family and is found throughout the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. They're the most abundant and widespread dolphin species and can be seen in pods exceeding a thousand individuals. FADs or fish aggregation devices have recently been installed along the New South Wales coast by the state government. This has opened up a whole new world of blue water hunting opportunities. Wahoo, tuna, kingfish, amberjack, mackerel, billfish and dolphinfish have all been encountered around them. Dolphinfish are a handsome pelagic predator, reaching a size of up to 45 kilograms. Their colors are truly beautiful, with a spectacular mix of blues and greens on a gold background. Dolphinfish are more surface oriented than most other fish. They're commonly found near floating objects that may harbour prey species.
Male dolphin fish are called bulls and have a distinctive bony crest on their heads. Younger fish are normally found inshore, while the larger animals are found further out to sea. Dolphin fish have an insatiable appetite and maintain a growth rate of over 50 centimetres a year while gaining up to 10% of their body weight per day. They typically live a maximum of five years and reach sexual maturity at just six months. These traits, coupled with the fact that dolphin fish are not targeted commercially in many locations throughout the world, help to make them a viable and resilient species capable of sustaining their population. Dolphin fish are migratory and each year they move away from the equator in spring and summer and toward the equator during autumn and winter as they seek water temperatures above 20 degrees Celsius. Dolphin fish fall prey to a number of oceanic predators including sharks, wahoo, tuna and marlin. Even though you'll often encounter schools within centimetres of the sea surface, it's best to duck dive down a metre or so to escape the difficult shooting conditions caused by chop and surface wave action. Your aim will be much steadier once you leave the surface. Dolphin fish should be bled and chilled immediately after capture to best preserve their texture and great eating qualities. The Eastern Blue Devil is a strikingly coloured temperate water fish and is a protected species in New South Wales. Flashes are commonly used to attract curious pelagic fish. Alligator gar are a welcome summer visitor. Billfish and wahoo love feeding on them. Wahoo are a near perfect example of a streamlined pelagic predator and among the fastest fish in the sea. They've been recorded swimming at speeds of up to 21 metres per second in short bursts. Wahoo may be solitary or form small aggregations of up to 15 or 20 fish. They are one of the few fish with a moving upper jaw. The maximum reported size for the wahoo is 2.5 metres and a weight of 83 kilograms.
Wahoo are a summer visitor to the New South Wales north coast, where they appear around February and stay until July. They're a truly majestic fish when lit up in hunting or fighting mode. Their bars are most pronounced when the fish is first caught and fades swiftly after death. Scalloped hammerhead sharks are often seen cruising on the surface. Maximum length for this species is about 4 metres. The scalloped hammerhead will often travel up a burly trail to investigate the food source. The coral crayfish is common on the shallow offshore reefs of the New South Wales north coast. Unlike the eastern rock lobster, they won't enter traps and aren't targeted commercially. Coral crayfish don't match the eastern rock lobster when it comes to eating qualities. They're found throughout the year along this section of coast, and in the past they've often been confused with similar species, such as the ornate or painted crayfish. Blue mowom grow to 81 centimetres in length and are often seen by spearfishers as they dive over sand near rocky reef. Like most instinctive shooting sports, it's important to practice regularly to improve your aiming skills. Taylor take about three years to reach a spawning size of 30 centimetres, but may survive over 14 years to reach in excess of 16 kilograms and 1.2 metres in length. They usually present a fast moving target.
golden trevally are a subtropical species reaching up to 1.1 metres in length. Juveniles live among the tentacles of jellyfish, while adults inhabit offshore reefs. The black stingray is one of the largest species of stingrays in Australia. It grows to 1.8 metres in width and 4 metres total length. It's often seen feeding on fish scraps at boat ramps up and down the coast. The Ludric is commonly seen along the New South Wales coast around shallow rocky reefs and weed beds. They form large schools and grow to a maximum length of about 70 centimetres. The blue barred parrotfish grows to one metre in length and up to six and a half kilos in weight. They make excellent eating.
The yellow-tailed kingfish is a powerful swimmer and is beautifully adapted to a pelagic lifestyle. They've been recorded from tropical and temperate waters of the Southern Hemisphere and the Northern Pacific. They can grow up to 2.4 metres in length and to a weight of 50 kilograms. In general, they inhabit rocky reefs and adjacent sandy areas in coastal waters and occasionally entering estuaries. They have good eating qualities and are seen as a trophy fish by many spearfishers. The yellowfin brim lives in schools in coastal and estuarine waters and grows to a length of 65 centimetres and about 4 kilograms in weight. In Australia, it is known to occur along the east coast from northern Queensland to eastern Victoria. The yellowfin brim is a common and important commercial and recreational species 
and they make great eating. South Wales north coast they are usually hunted during winter when the inshore waters are clearer. The great white shark is a powerful predator that provokes fear in many people. They can grow to 6 metres in length, weigh up to 3 tonnes and are found worldwide in temperate coastal seas. The great white shark is protected in all Australian waters. This 4.5 metre female came up the Burley Trail while diving for yellowfin on the continental shelf. The ornate wobbegong is usually seen near inshore reefs and offshore islands to depths of about 50 metres. They can reach 3.5 metres in length and spend much of their time during the day resting on the seabed. They have tremendous camouflage and are often difficult to detect, a distinct advantage for a lightning fast ambush predator. Ornate wobbegongs are more active at night when they hunt large prey such as fish, crabs and octopus. They're generally not aggressive, however they should be considered as potentially dangerous due to their large size, sharp teeth and bulldog grip which could drown a freediver. The slipper lobster is one of the best tasting crustaceans found in New South Wales. Their habit of hanging suspended upside down in caves, combined with their great camouflage, makes them a rare catch. The Pacific sailfish is one of the most spectacular game fish encountered off the north coast. The majority of catches are made in autumn when they can be found surface feeding on alligator gar around offshore islands and reefs. A well placed shot will normally hold in a sailfish because unlike marlin they have very firm flesh and tough skin. As another season draws to a close it's time to reflect upon the previous year's great adventures and close encounters. It's not always necessary to travel to exotic locations to land trophy fish. With a little research, determination and perseverance, you could land the fish of a lifetime almost on your doorstep, just as Gavin did with his 63.2 kilogram IUSA world record Pacific sailfish taken off his hometown of Coffs Harbour. As poor weather conditions and the cold currents of winter move onto the coast, there's plenty of time to modify or maintain equipment, plan future expeditions and dream about the season to come.
Hello, my name is Dr Adam Smith and I have a very strong affinity with the ocean and its creatures. I'm a marine biologist, freediver, spearfisher and also national chair of the Australian Underwater Federation, which is the peak body representing the interests of freedivers and spearfishers. I strongly encourage all people with an interest in the water to join the Australian Underwater Federation. Contact details can be found at the end of this program. I'm delighted to introduce this magnificent program by Brett Verko. I've dived with Brett on several occasions and he is extremely knowledgeable of fish and spearfishing and his video camera takes you with him on some amazing breath hold dives. This is the first program in the new Immersion series which features spearfishing action from locations all over Australia. This particular program was filmed on the north coast of New South Wales in the beautiful waters between Tweed Heads and Smoky Cape and there's quite a lot of excellent footage from Brett's home waters around Coffs Harbour. In this film you'll see some of the wide variety of species encountered whilst diving at some of the best spearfishing locations on the New South Wales north coast. The Australian Jewfish or Mulloway is a large predator found on rocky shores, beaches, offshore rocky reefs and in estuaries. There are similar species to the American white sea bass and the South African Daga salmon or cob. Mulloway may reach 45 kilograms in weight and are one of New South Wales premier fish species due to their combination of good eating qualities, size and handsome appearance. Spearfishing is a fantastic sport and many people do not have a great understanding of how we do it. This program educates by providing the names of common and prized species, both pelagic and demersal. It tells you where to find them, how to catch them, but also has strong messages about conservation, sustainability and selectivity. There are two world record catches on this program, as well as numerous large fish action on great species such as Mulloway, Yellowtail Kingfish, Wahoo and Dolphinfish. Please remember that this footage has been compiled over several years and hundreds of hours immersed in the water. And if you're a beginner, then you will not get these types of results straight away. But you will learn and you will improve. Sharks used to be regarded with terror by people who entered the ocean. Now we regard species such as grey nurse sharks as a magnificent part of the biodiversity. We only look and don't interfere. This program also contains footage of whales, dolphins, turtles, rays, jellyfish and other invertebrates and huge schools of fish which reinforces the colour. East Australia Current brings warm tropical waters from the Coral Sea down the east coast into New South Wales where they eventually mingle with cool temperate waters. The resulting mix provides a unique environment where corals and tropical reef fish coexist with temperate seaweeds and fish species from colder latitudes. Numerous estuaries provide nursery areas for many juvenile marine species. Add to this a large number of offshore reefs, a narrow continental shelf, and some of New South Wales' most important island groups, such as the Solitary Islands, and you have some world-class spearfishing opportunities. The New South Wales North Coast supports many industries that benefit directly from the great marine biodiversity of this region. joy of being underwater. So whether you are an expert or a novice, I welcome you to join Brett Verko and his friends in the underwater world of the freediver and spearfisher as they hunt an interesting mix of pelagic and demersal species.
There are only two places on the Australian continent where southern flowing warm tropical currents meet and mix with cooler, nutrient-rich temperate waters. On the west coast this happens near Shark Bay and on the eastern seaboard this occurs off the north coast of New South Wales. The 